All right, remember, grip, track, reach, and the fire will happen on its own. Oh my God. If you act like a gazelle, you're gonna get eaten. So these are all layers of defense and elements. Bring your thumb up just a little bit more to that right there. Until you're standing in front of another person, it's not relatable to the fight. But what is gonna end a fight? Either you have to finish it, right, and survive, or the other person runs away. After the shooting, what was your thought process? That the community was gonna need a lot of help. Um, that there were people that were going to uh, struggle with uh, being around guns or hearing guns, seeing guns, um, and what really what's in place to help people um, reacclimate uh, to that environment, especially in Vegas, where you know uh, guns are, are much more uh, prevalent than in states like California or New York. Um, it's part of our culture here. We trained about 860 people and just getting them re-acclimated to guns. And this is a great way to do it because they're real guns, but the ammo is not lethal. Our intention in doing that class was to help. Um, number one thing with self-defense is self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And if a person loses self-confidence, it doesn't matter what they do, it's going to fail. And so we wanted to get people moving again. We wanted to get them comfortable. Um, associative therapy. Reach for it, right? I better see you and the gun breach at the same time. Were these people that had been at the shooting or just people in the community that were then now scared? Hundreds from the shooting. the shooting. Yeah, I mean, there were people that we had in here two days after she lost her uncle. Um, he was shot in the head on October 1st and she was in here training with us just two days later. Were they having, I mean, in these yes. classes, were they having Oh yeah, there were a lot of tears, there were a lot of, uh, of, of moments of struggle, but that's what we were trying to address. It wasn't about the CCW, because if you ever sit through any of our classes and our training, even though we do the most extreme level of training, and that's full contact gunfighting, there are so many layers before you get to that point that you should have locked down. There are four pillars to gunfighting. Number one is eye-hand coordinated shooting. Number two is your movement and tactics. Number three, weapon retention, disarmament. And number four, violence of action. They have to be built in that order. Because you could have great movement and tactics, but if you can't hit what you're setting up the shot to do, then it all falls apart, blows up in your face. So it starts with your grip. Your right hand's gonna be here. It's like a home key on a typewriter. It always stays up here. And you just punch out like you're diving off a diving board and those are gonna mirror each other. The idea is, is more associative therapy to get people um, reacclimated to firearms and not be a victim. How do we take care of that fear after an incident like that so the next time something happens, they're not a victim all over again? Hit, there you go, hit! I'm not against things that do make sense because I am about having a safer world for us to live in. But I also understand that law enforcement is not gonna magically appear and stop somebody from stabbing me or punching me in the head. That's my responsibility. Don't you dare limit my ability to preserve my own life.